to everyone that is joining us. My name is Melanie Hester, and I am the Community Engagement Manager here at Awana. And I am just so glad that you have chosen to take a little bit of time with us to start listening in on what does it look like for us to look to the fall? I know it feels like it might be still a little bit of time away, but what does it look like to look to the fall and the starting of our club and, and decide that like this is what we need to do and where we need to go? Because this is a big, incredible opportunity in front of us. Today, I am joined by three incredible missionaries that serve with Awana, Cindy Vesperman, Kevin Chuning, and Tim Bennett. Um, Cindy Vesperman, she's the Awana missionary to North Central California. And guys, can you believe that she has been serving as a missionary for the last 23 years? Absolutely incredible. Uh, Kevin Chuning, he is the Awana missionary to Eastern North Carolina, and he and his wife have been serving for 15 years. And Tim Bennett, he and his wife have been serving as the Awana missionaries to Southeast Georgia for the last three years. And so today we are just going to dive right in. And, and I just want to ask, you guys have obviously been serving for so, so long. Um, where do leaders even start? Like they look at this huge task in front of them. They're like, we're going to start prepping for club year. And man, it feels overwhelming. So where do we even start? Um, I, I think you need to ask yourself, what do we want to accomplish? Um, uh, do we want something that's uh, babysitting while the adults are in Bible study, which I hope that's not what you have? Um, or do we want to truly be discipling children? And what what are some of the key things that we need to think about in order to make that discipleship a reality? Mm. Yeah, yeah that's really and as good. we as we look to the future as in next year, one of the biggest keys to me is to look back at last year. If we had club last year, if we were a club that, that, that ran last fall, what worked, what didn't work, mm -hmm. ask yourselves questions and, and don't be afraid to ask tough questions and take down some of the things that you've just rolled over for maybe the last five, six, seven years that, that seem mm -hmm. natural parts of your you're a one ministry, but maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they aren't working very well. And so take an honest, hard look at what, what worked last year. And then as you look forward to the next year, what you want to accomplish and streamlining that, um, put the pieces back into place, uh, um, for that. Uh, and then another thing to think about is, okay, at the end of the year, what do we want to be able to say about our kids? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, do we, what you know how can we maybe measure some growth in them and um their love for the lord you know how so those kinds of things too what so that we have a goal in mind at the end of the year to, so that we can go back and then evaluate so what i hear you guys saying is before like it can feel like we not want to like sit in the task and we're like okay let's get started let's get our volunteers let's get let's get those incredible leaders who are going to serve alongside us let's start planning fun events let's start getting the like the tools that we need but actually what you're recommending is that leaders as you begin to think to starting club for the fall really the most helpful thing would be to like stop to sit down and do some reflection of what the last year has looked like for you. Because perhaps maybe for you as a leader, your first year coming out of COVID was this past year. And so there are perhaps some things that didn't, um, it, it may not be things that need to move into this new year, or perhaps you're starting for the first time. And this is like overwhelming thinking about what you need to do. And I think, Cindy, those questions are still good for whether you've been doing it for years or whether you're doing it for the first time. Like, what do you want your kids to walk away with at the end of the year? So I'd love to hear from you guys, like what, when you ask that question and you center everything that you do out of that, what does that help? Like, how does that help you serve the child better? A big well, I part of that is just knowing what you want to accomplish with those kids yeah. and say, where yeah. are they at now? You know, you've got yeah. the group of kids that's in your church. You've got the group of kids you're trying to reach in the community. What are their needs and what do you want to see them become at the end of your one a year? And how do we accomplish that? And so mm -hmm. that's a thing that you want to look at. Yeah, I think throughout the year, then, if you're able to kind of give your 
disciple making people that are working with you in your Awana ministry, your leaders in that Awana ministry, if they know the, what you're trying to accomplish and you have that clear set out as you move forward each year, you serve the child better because your leaders then have that mm-hmm. in mind. They're constantly looking at those traits and those things. And how did, how did those kids grow and how are they moving towards that? And, and so mm-hmm. it allows, that's how one of the ways it allows you to tr- serve those children better. And I, I think then we also put our focus on the child and not mm-hmm. the program. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes yeah. we think, okay, well, you know, what are my theme nights are going to be? And when are we going to do this event or that event or whatever? But if we put our focus on the discipleship of the child and then fit in these other things that will help with that discipleship rather mm-hmm. than just, okay, well, I have to have this, 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 and this. And now I've got all that crossed off of my list. And I'm not really thinking about the impact it's going to have on the child then mm. we're kind of doing things backward. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Okay. So <laughs> this is, this is a lot. So like, I, like I just would ask then if someone wants to keep like processing through how to do this, like I'm going to kind of do like throw an obvious here, Kevin, who should they go to uh, well, to help they continue to go. process these yeah. questions? Yeah. They need to reach out to their one missionary. Their yes. one missionary can walk them through all of these things. Um, you know, help them figure out what worked well, what didn't work well from their previous Awana experiences. Um, help them kind of say, hey, what does your community look like? What do your kids look like? They can walk them through that. I think the biggest thing the missionary can do is sit there and walk them through what we call a resilient child discipleship conversation and talk about belong, believe, and become. How can we create belonging for these kids? How can we help these kids believe in Jesus? And how can we help them become more like Jesus within your unique context? So reaching out to your Awana missionary, sitting down and having that conversation will be huge to kicking off your Awana year and really starting well. Mm -hmm. And so the big thing is reach out to your Awana missionary. You may think they have a big area to cover, but they cannot wait to hear from you because they (laughs) want to come alongside you. They want to serve you and they want to help you in your ministry. Um, And the Mm -hmm. easiest way to find them, if you don't know who your Awana missionary is, is go to awana.org, click on the Mm -hmm. U.S. ministry tab, and then there's a find U.S. missionary. Click on that, put in your state, put in your county, and it will help you to figure mm-hmm. out who your missionary is. And you can reach out to them and contact them. They cannot wait to hear from you because they want to come mm-hmm. alongside you and serve you. Yes, let me throw out there too. If for some reason that that you find a U.S. missionary tab doesn't work, like would you just reach out to Partner Care at Awana Daughter? They would yeah. love to connect you to your to your local missionary and make sure that you're connected to them because I see some of you, this may be the very first time and you may be saying like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that there was a resource like the Awana Missionary in my area. And so, all right, so we're kicking this off with some major things. First, like connect with our local missionary. And in, in doing that, like take time to sit down and reflect, like what do we as a church want our Awana club to be to our community? And how do we want to influence and um, serve the kids that are going to be coming through our church? And so I'm going to go to this super obvious one next that everyone has on their minds. And it's going to be getting the number of leaders that they need to start their Awana club. And so I'm just going to lay the question out that everybody's asking, how do we recruit enough leaders to start our club? Well, first you have to cast a vision, right? So if you know what you want to accomplish, then you cast that vision to people and you say, Hey, we, we want to have an Awana club. We're going to start one for, we've never had one before. Are we going to continue where we left off from last year? But we need people who have a heart to invest in the lives of children and to disciple children. Um, we, we don't need warm bodies that are going to show up on a club night just, you know, to be there. Um, what we want are people who are who really want to invest in the lives of these children. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I believe that people like to be involved in ministries where ministry is happening. Right. And, and mm-hmm. kids are kid children's ministry, children's discipleship ministry, God works in children's discipleship ministry, but we don't talk about it and create that community around it so that the congregation might, might know what's actually happening. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I go to, we, I, Cindy and Kevin, it's probably the same thing, but you talk to um, churches and you might talk to the Awana leaders or the Awana ministry directors, and they know what's going on in the Awana ministry, but then the other people in the congregation on a Sunday morning might have no idea 
um, mm -hmm. who might want to serve alongside children and might want to invest in those kids, but they don't, they don't know what's going on. So if you could maybe create some communities around um, the ability, small groups, talk about it in your mm -hmm. small groups, what's God doing in the lives of these kids? And that goes back to the vision that you've casted. Your leaders are invested in that vision. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to be talking about that vision throughout the year. And I believe more leaders are going to naturally come and say, hey, I'd like to be a part of Awana as well, because God is, seems to be moving in our Awana club. And I want to be a part mm -hmm. of where God is moving. And I think that we won't have to maybe beg and borrow from the pews anymore um, if mm -hmm. we cast that vision and we're around and people might be knocking on the door waiting to get in, just kind of like the kids are waiting to get into Awana. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all great things. The other thing is pray. Uh, mm -hmm. Oftentimes we forget that, but pray that the Lord will put names on your mind and heart to go and ask and go and ask them. And another thing is, is observe how people interact with kids. There are a lot of people that are not involved in children's ministry that have a love for kids that you can go and ask to be a part of the ministry. But that personal invites a key. And I, I think I've found some people have a, a lot more success with being intentional as they pray about going to individuals and talking to them and saying, hey, I, I've been praying about who's going to lead our Sparks group. And I've seen this in you. And I think God could really use you in this way. And so I'd like to invite you to be part of our Sparks group rather than having one blanket statement in front of the congregation on a Sunday morning that says, we need 10 people to fill out our Awana roster for leaders. Would you please serve? Um, but intentionally going to those people that God places on your heart and asking them uh, individually uh, it has a little bit better effect um, than that blanket statement. Well, and I also think along with that, it's not just the role of the Awana ministry director to find yeah. those people that want child to disciple the kids, but, you know, tap, tap your current leadership to the, anybody who's working with the children to say, okay, you know, you know, people that I might not know very well. So, you know, let's, mm -hmm. let's divide and conquer and let's go ask, you know, all these people, we're all going to pray together and see who God lays on our hearts. And then we're going to go talk to these people and say, Hey, God laid you on my heart to talk to you about serving in the Iwana club. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great concept, Cindy, because the funnest way to serve is to serve <laughs> alongside your friend. So yeah. if you get all your leaders to go and ask their friends to come and serve, that can be a great way to kind of recruit. I love the way that you guys are connecting this vision and passion. And, and I think what you guys would all agree with is that it's, it's the combination of like the both and like, let's, let's have those from the front conversations to the entire congregation, mm -hmm. but don't let it just be that. Like if all you're doing is that, that blip, how many of you sitting in your church service, when those announcements come into town, like into, into the time for you, as you're sitting there, how many of you, and, and like, be honest, like you, you may pull out your phone at that time because maybe you're getting your Bible app ready, or maybe you're checking the sports score. Let's be real. Sometimes that happens, right? Like, or perhaps that's like in our church, that's actually when all of the parents are dismissed to go pick up their kids to bring them back into the service for the rest. Mm -hmm. So there's maybe they're not even there, right? Like, and so I think that's why it's super important to make sure that you're doing that both and both to cast the vision for like, this is a personal ask. And, and I think that that leads to that bigger conversation that discipleship is from birth to death. It, 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 it's ageless. And so if we're segmenting just the discipleship of kids outside of the general like vision for what discipleship looks like within the church, then that, that means that, that we're, we've created a silo. And so, so like, I think that other piece that we, we, should, we need to bring in there is, is if you don't have your senior leadership at your church on board with what it looks like to champion Awana and to say that this is a space where kids come to know, love and serve God in a way that helps them become like disciples today, um, then I'd encourage you to do that. That should be another first step is to go have a conversation. And like Tim just said, go share some of those golden nuggets. Like this is what happened last year. Did you know that? Like, did you know that this is how God has worked in our kids and the ways that they've come to know and love and serve him more? Um, so as, as we talk at, like through volunteers and leaders and, and how to get that, those often people are looking for a specific number. Like, tell me how many 
I need for each group. Like tell me exactly what I need and I'll try to go recruit that. And, and what that kind of brings up is this larger question that they don't know that they're asking, which is like, just tell me what my club is supposed to look like. Like, and so I just want to ask the three of you, is there a specific way that someone's club is supposed to act or function? Like what should someone's local club look like? Um, their club should look like whatever makes the most sense for them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's some key things that I want to say, Hey, these are, these are, are good pieces to have, but mm -hmm. even still that doesn't always make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's because of your facility or the number of kids you have or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so what does your club look like? Well, think of, okay, back to, you know, your vision, what do you want to accomplish? Okay. So if you know that, then pick the two or three things that are most important for, for you to include in, in your Awana club. Um, mm -hmm. is it, is it game time? Is it small group time? Is it large group time? Uh, you know, I've heard of some churches, they, they just have a small window of time. So, um, one week they do, <coughs> they'll do like an icebreaker and large group time. And the next week they'll have game time and small group time. Mm -hmm. And, you mm -hmm. know, so each, each lesson, if you will, takes two weeks time. Mm -hmm. Um, others have two hours and, and, you know, they have more than enough time to, to do all that. And then some, right. So it just really depends on, um, on your unique situation. Every church is different. Yeah. So the big thing is, is look at those three B's that belong, believe, and become. If you're creating a space where kids are finding belonging and can belong to the church and belong to Jesus, that's an important aspect. If you're creating a space where they're able to hear the gospel and believe in Jesus, that's what you want to accomplish. If you're creating a space where they can become more like Jesus through conversation with their leaders and be able to understand what context these kids are struggling with and be able to apply that scripture to that, that's what you want to accomplish. That's what it should look like. And that's going to look different in every church in every group of kids. Mm -hmm. But just try and think, am I accomplishing those three Bs? That's the important mm -hmm. aspect to look at. And it, and it kind of goes back to this, this time that we're in is this evaluation time and not leaving any stone unturned, right? As you mm -hmm. dig, dig for these um, uh, priorities and the things that are going to uh, work best and the, the, the strongest priorities for your club. Um, so even things like a, a big one um, here is Awana happens on Wednesday night, right? From seven to eight, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to. Um, maybe okay. that's not the best for your community. Maybe, maybe you're, um, maybe you're missing out on, on great leaders because they're in another ministry that's happening at that same time. And if you move the time, they might be able to serve along with other people. So, mm -hmm. I, and I'm not saying that it shouldn't happen on Wednesday night either. I'm just kind of allowing those here to have the freedom to look at, look at everything and, and dig through the things and don't be committed. Um, you know, I, as a personal example, when I was leading our club, I, I switched it. I used to have it on Sunday nights from six to eight. Um, but I was losing, I, I had dinner first to try to build some community with the parents, but I was losing my, my younger kids and they weren't able to bring their friends because it got too late for that school night. So we prayed about it. We talked about it. We moved it to Sunday afternoon from four to six, our Awana club and had dinner afterwards. And it, uh -huh. it changed a lot and allowed our parents to be able to be more involved. It allowed me to be more involved, but that's what worked for me. That's just an example of how I that you can change things up and, and have it work a little bit better. It might not work for everyone, but uh, I guess the overarching thing is just, just dig in and, uh, and don't leave uh, stones unturned when you're deciding what's, what's important and what's going to work for you. And in, you my area, in, in my area, and just kind of to reiterate what Tim said is I have, there's a one of clubs that meet every night of the week where I live. Um, mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it doesn't have to be Wednesday or Sunday or whatever day, but any day it could work. Hmm. Cindy, I, I love, I love that you're giving us that practical look into like your area, like same Tim for your direct, like 
example of you leading. And I, and I think what I hear you guys saying is the importance of recognizing that, that when you choose to partner with Awana to run a club at your church, um, we're, we're here to help you with a tool to, to disciple the children in your church and community. And, and while that might come with a framework of, of, a, of a suggestion of like, hey, have a large group time, have a small group time, have game time, have, you know, activities. What we're saying, though, is, is like, like, the, there are things that might be extras. So can you guys help me understand, like, what are the essentials that someone needs to have in their club each week? Um, I, I have an analogy for for this uh, that I use with some churches that I use, uh, that I talk to. Um, and, it, and it talks about hunting or fishing and uh, in the same way that Cabela's and the catalog and the products that Cabela's hunting and fishing catalogs and stuff have resources for that. So if I'm going to hunt or fish um, and I'm getting prepared and I'm getting ready, I could look at that cat catalog from Cabela's and be completely overwhelmed and not know what to purchase. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of items that I could purchase, but I need to ask myself as I look at that, those resources, what is going to help me catch the fish? What is going to help me be successful? So as you look at your vision as an AMD or as a pastor, um, as a leader, as you look at that vision, as you see what you want to accomplish and you dial it down to those priorities, that's going to mm-hmm. allow you to look at the, uh, the want of resources in a new light and say, what's, what's the things that are going to help me accomplish that, that vision? And if it doesn't help me accomplish that vision, if it's extra, then maybe I don't, maybe I don't need it. And that's going to look different than the, um, the, than the church down the street or the church across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, if I was, if I was hunting in New York, rather than hunting in South Georgia, I'm going to need different equipment, different clothes I'm going to wear based on the region, based on what I'm going after. Um, and, and the same would be true for my neighborhood and my community of kids and my lead, my leaders and my disciple makers. They're all going to be different than the other church. And we're going to have a different mission. So we might need uh, different resources and products. And, and that's where, once again, the Iwana missionary can come in and help you and decipher through those as you look in your vision and say, hey, there's this really good resource over here that maybe you haven't thought of in this way. Um, let me let me help you steer that direction. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I love that. I love that. Cindy, could you speak to like, when it comes to the program specific, like there's so many different parts that someone might choose to incorporate into their night. Like what, like boil it down for us. Like what are the most essential things that someone needs to have? Well, you know, I think um, Kevin, you know, when he was talking about the three B's belong, believe, become. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at what, what in club would allow a child to experience belonging well being part of a team so whether that's team games you know on the game square or if it's um putting a puzzle together with a group of kids um Mm -hmm. and then having those loving caring adults around to to have conversation with right Mm -hmm. so um so there's the belonging they're they're part of a team they're part they're in a place where people care about them um and then, then we've got this, the believe thing. So we, we need some biblical teaching in there, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, teaching them the truth of God's word and then time and the opportunity to, to talk about it. Okay. Well, what, mm-hmm. you know, so they can ask questions or they can clarify things or leaders can, you know, that, well, the child disciple or people can, can say, okay, did this really make sense and have that back and forth conversation. So we understand um, that belief portion. And then, and then with becoming is opportunities to put it into practice. It could be opportunities to serve in your club night. Um, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, setting out chairs and picking up trash. Um, or it it could be, uh, opportunities, you know, other times when you're getting together, but we want kids to have that opportunity to just live out the things that they're learning. So, um, with a lot of places, that means, okay, I'm going to have a large group time. But if I have eight kids in my TNT club, my large group and my small group are pretty much the same, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So so it 
again, it's, it has to do with what makes the most sense in your situation. We want to accomplish these things. We want to have the belonging aspect. We want to have the believing aspect and opportunity for teaching and conversation, but how that really looks and what we call it um, Mm -hmm. will vary from situation to situation. Mm -hmm. Mm, I love that. So as we establish what those like essentials are, then I think that's where, oh man, Tim, I love your Cabela's analogy. I think that that is so spot on because um, then it, it, it helps us to, as leaders to realize like these are things that I can pick or choose like mm-hmm. for what best serves my church. Right. So let's dig into that. Like as leaders begin to look through um, all of the things that they could potentially bring into their club night, all of the extras that are outside the essentials. Like, let's just talk about like, like, let's just go through like a list really fast. Like, like what are the things that we can like flex and adjust with? And I'm just going to like ask, like, do, does every child need a uniform? Like, do they need to have like the same shirt coming into club? Absolutely not. (laughs) Yeah, I think what we have to do is look at, we offer uniforms and why do we offer that to help provide unity, to provide belonging, provide a place to display awards. So if you think of it in that term and think about, okay, what are we using for our church? Do we really need uniforms? Um, One example we noticed in the TNTers in our club one year that they all had to wear a uniform at school. So when they came on Wednesday night, they didn't want to have to wear another uniform. Mm -hmm. So the t-shirt was in their bag you'd ask to see their uniform and you see a small corner, they'd never put it on. So we just went to a sling bag. They could put Mm. their awards on that and that worked out well. So you don't have to use uniforms. Use Mm -hmm. what's going to work for the kids in your context, but think Mm -hmm. how can we create a unity with our club? Um, And that might not be uniforms. It may be something else. If you're using awards, you just have to think about, okay, how are we going to give the kids the opportunity to display those awards, whether it be at home Mm -hmm. or at the church? So they've got mm-hmm. some place to put them. So begin thinking through those. You could just use a t-shirt for your church. It's totally up to you. Um, I would say the big place where uniforms is really important is in your leaders. So when mm-hmm. parents walk into that room, they can automatically see, hey, there are enough mm-hmm. leaders here that my kids mm-hmm. are going to be safe. And if mm-hmm. I have a question, I know who to go to. So at mm-hmm. least be thinking about that in the term of uniforms. But as sure, far as yeah. your kids, make it flexible. Take what works for your kids. I think the leader uniforms too is a really important thing for that visual. Like you had just said, Kevin, like if a family were to walk in and they wanted to know who's a leader and who's not supposed to be, or, or for the leader who's looking around and saying, oh, wait, there's somebody who isn't in a shirt that I recognize. Like, I don't know that that person's supposed to be here. Let me go find out like what's going on. Let me go see who they yeah. are and why they're here and find, see if I can direct them to the right place. Right. Like it well, just gives that visual. Yeah. Yeah. Also for the kids, right? For the kids' safety, they know I can go to this person. They're a leader. Um, we Absolutely. can communicate throughout the throughout the year, um, and uh, they they know who they can trust, who they can go to, who they can um, yeah. figure out what what to do with them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's talk about books. Cindy, um, you were, you so beautifully walked us through what does it look like to help a child belong, believe and become in the environment that we're creating for them during our club night. So um, where do books fit into that? And like, what does that look like for each club? Like are books necessary? So books are a great tool. Um, Mm -hmm. But again, it depends on, on your situation. So um, if, if you're a WANA club and the kids who come for the most part are, their parents are engaged in what they're doing, then books totally make sense. Mm-hmm. If, if 90% of your kids that come to a WANA are outreach kids and, um, you're glad that they're there and you're hearing, they're hearing God's word, then, um, books might not make sense. Um, mm-hmm. and, and maybe you have a mix, right? Um, and so part of it is, maybe, maybe some kids have books and maybe some kids don't. And, and it, mm-hmm. it, it can be very creative how you work that out. Um, th- if you have um, some kids with books and some with, without books, um, perhaps you have a stash of the essentials books on the shelf. And so the kids can kind of track along. Mm-hmm. Maybe they take mm-hmm. it home. Maybe they don't. Um, but, um, you know, one of our goals is find that, finding out where the child is in their spiritual walk. Okay, have they trusted Christ? 
Um, are they mm-hmm. in a growing relationship or is this all brand new to them? Figure out where they are and figure out what tool or resource, as far as the books go, makes sense. And then disciple them to that next level. So, and it might be baby steps. So you might have somebody coming in and the first couple months and they're just, you know, they're there because it's fun. They're tracking along, but maybe come January and maybe they've put their trust in Christ and now they want to grow. So maybe jumping into a handbook at this point would really make sense for them. Mm -hmm. Um, So so that has a, just evaluating on um, where the kids are who are coming to your club, where they are in their spiritual walk and in their disciplines. Are they getting help at home? Well, can I help you decide if, if books make sense or not? Yeah, I love, I love this conversation because it, like when we go to an Awana club to visit, to, to meet with the leaders, one of the things I hear a lot is the, the time and small group and trying to get through the books. And if you have the books um, and the kids aren't tracking with the books, they're, they're not engaged in those books. It seems like a, a chore that we are trying to accomplish during small group time as leaders, rather than a wonderful discussion around whatever the topic is that night in TNT that we're talking about. Um, and, and, and so the leaders kind of almost get burnt out and the kids kind of get burnt out on it mm-hmm. rather than being excited about what we're talking about and invested in what we're talking about and the, and the conversations that could just spring up. And so certainly I'm not advocating against books, but I'm just saying, once again, I love this conversation because leaders can get into, if you're, are tracking with the books and they're not engaged in the book, that might mm-hmm. not be the only mm-hmm. win in your Awana club. Like that might not be the, the, the one thing we're looking for growth. Like we said, so if, uh, if a conversation might help that in our small group time, rather than forced more homework, kind of forced work, if it seems like that in your Awana club, then once again, use the resource to, to be able to reach the kids the best you can. I think there's we also want to remember that we are going to have kids who totally eat up the books, right? So we want to not discount that. We want to, if kids, if that's how a great way for them to be discipled, because that's how they're wired and their parents are helping them, then absolutely they should have the opportunity to be working in a book. Mm -hmm. I think the books are a great resource, a great tool um, in many different ways. We just have to be careful because sometimes the book can be the end all. We get focused on completing the book and the book becomes what it's all about. And it's not about the book. It's about discipleship. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to make sure discipleship's happening first and that the handbook or essentials, whichever one we're using is a tool to help accomplish that and not mm-hmm. the end goal, that the end yeah. goal is discipleship. I have a, I have a quick, fantastic, I, I just was at a club not that long ago and I was sitting and I was listening to a small group. There were three TNT girls and two of the people that were listening to their section, they were trying to work through the book, work through the verses. And I could tell throughout like the 25 minute time that the leaders there were getting somewhat frustrated because the kids hadn't learned the verse. They hadn't spent any time throughout the week. They're just repeating the verse back and they're really they're having more of a discussion amongst themselves about their week and the things that are going on in their week, rather than trying to learn this verse. And that's what we're here to do is to learn the verse. Right. And so at the end of that small group time, you could just see the leaders were frustrated a little right uh, at the, how that went. And so it was great. I walked over, I sat down next to them like, man, that was a really great conversation that you were just able to be a part of with these girls. And, and if, and if we could see that, that you learned that she's having issues with her, her stepdad, um, this other girl has a test this week. You know, as I started listening to the girls and their conversations, this girl has a big test at school this week. Um, these, this other thing's going on. Next week, if you have these same girls, you'll be able to follow up with that. And so I just wanted them to see that there's another aspect to our small group time than just having to feel frustrated that we didn't get that task done that we needed to get done. Yeah, I I love that your perspective around that. And I appreciate you guys sharing that. Um, And like to just really hone in on this leaders, the, the books are essential tools for discipleship. Mm -hmm. And so allow those book to be a tool in your hands, allow them to be a tool in the hands of your leaders to help that child come to know Christ in a way that, that, shows that they feel known by God. 
Because as they begin to, to feel that and they begin to feel that through you and they see that they were made in the very image of God, then all of a sudden, like the books become a tool that helps the Bible become alive to them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so um, use these books as an opportunity to disciple these kids. Well, um, okay. well I was yeah, just saying, as I, I love it when I get a call from um, a director and one ministry director that says, okay, we have all these kinds of kids in our club and we're not quite sure how to work small group time, you know, because these kids are doing the book, these ones aren't. And to have that conversation with your one missionary to help you figure out how, how to actually put it all together. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we're here. Mm -hmm. well, and Awana Absolutely. has done a fantastic job in the last, the last several years of creating several opportunities where you can work with several different kids at all kinds of different levels in the same mm -hmm. small group. Talk about the same thing, not let anyone feel um, not involved and not included but allow them to all be part of this congregation conversation regard whether they're doing the verse and they've been able to say that verse, memorize it through the week, or they haven't. They're all part of this conversation that we're having in small group. And Awana's done a really good job with all those resources of creating uh, good things for ministry directors to be able to pick and choose from um, for that one small group and accomplish that one thing. Yeah, and that yeah. whole key is leaders just being intentional and engaging each kid. No matter where they're at, no matter how much they're learning, taking some time to engage with each kid in small group time, work with them with a verse, talk about what's going on in their life, and just spend that time with them. There's plenty yeah. of time for the kid that has 10 sections that's ready to say that we can figure that out at the end of club or before club. Um, but make sure during small group time, you've got, you work with each kid and engage yeah. each kid. Yeah, I, I think so many good ideas that you guys have just presented, like identify what each of the children need. If each of them get a book, great. If some of them get a book that they take home because it's a tool in the hands of the parent as well. Amazing. If you keep a stash of books at the church where every time that child comes in so that they feel like they are like they belong here, that they get a book every time they walk through the door, that's a great solution too, right? And so um, uh, we've heard a couple of things around like, uh, essentials and regular handbooks. And so if you have questions around what that looks like, would you reach out to your local missionary and, and, and begin that conversation around like, how, what does this look like for my church to be able to implement that? They are going to be the best ones to try and help answer that question for you. Um, and then I want to jump into one last thing here, because one of my favorite things as I have um, been able to visit churches, just, just whether I'm in a new city or traveling or whatever that looks like, one of my favorite things is when I like look out on their, on their outside on their asphalt or whether it's inside their gym. And I immediately know that they're in Awana church because they have the Awana game square right they have this tool for games and fun <laughs> that i can connect to back when i was a kid running around in circles for what seemed like an eternity trying to catch the person in front of me right this has been such a great tool and so many of our leaders may also have that if they've been an established church or the wanna but but could you guys help us know like does game time have to always exist on that circle does it always have to exist in that space I have a no. lot of churches that don't have a game square. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> several. Um, I, I think that it's important once again when you look at game time, like you look at your entire club. What are we? What are we doing during game time? What are we trying mm -hmm. to accomplish? And um, game time is probably one of the most important things that you have in your club because it's your draw. Mm -hmm. Kids, and there's not a lot of uh, you know first through fifth graders that sign up for more work throughout the week um, and mm -hmm. can sit still and, and listen to some people. So uh, game time is that fantastic draw, but it's that fun and engaging relational relationship building time is what game time is. And you can do that with a game square, or you can do that with um, a hallway, or you can do that outside, or you can do that with a puzzle, or you can do that with um, some thought thought provoking games. Um, you know, one of the big keys is that not every kid in your Iwana club, even though the loudest ones want dodgeball every week and they want the big gym and they want to run forever, not every kid wants that mm -hmm. as their game time. So once again, learning your kids and seeing those things and your game time might, might look a whole, a whole lot different. 
but absolutely not. You can do it in any, really any space whatsoever. You can have a, a fun, interactive, relational building time with all of your leaders. <laughs> Definitely. I've seen churches do many different things, especially large clubs would offer a choice. So kids could choose game time. They could choose like missions or choose drama. And I think Mm -hmm. the unique thing is find out what your kids enjoy doing and uh, Mm -hmm. give those options, do those type things, because that creates that belonging, creates them doing something together. It creates that teamwork if they're doing that. So anything could be used during that time. Yeah, because if the if the game square works for your church, then get on that thing and have fun. Like mm-hmm. I was the expert anchor in that tug of war growing up. <laughs> like I have so many good memories of playing on that game square. And so if that's a tool that you use for fun, then keep at it. And if that's something that you want to adapt and, and bring into your church um, and use, then, then go for it. But if that feels overwhelming to you, I think that this is where it's important to what Cindy mentioned at the very beginning, like decide what is going to be the things that you do for this year that, and, and then, and then let that align with your vision and then run with it. And then maybe mm-hmm. next year, there's something else that you're able to then maybe add in if it's different or whatnot, but that's, that's then something else you can add maybe next year, or perhaps there's something that didn't work this year again, in that reflection piece at the very beginning that you can do on a, on a yearly basis. So uh, Cindy, for leaders who are saying, I want to keep talking through what this looks like and, and how to help really prepare well for the new club year, what resources are available for people to um, learn more about that? Well, we've mentioned your Wana missionary a number of times, so there's there's your number one go to. Um, but <laughs> but um, you know, there's the Wana Basics online um, that's mm-hmm. available. There's the Wana Ministry Conference that's coming up. Also, a couple of virtual Wana Ministry conferences. Um, mm-hmm. The Wana Podcast, the Wana Club's podcast, is great. It breaks things down mm-hmm. to like small nuggets, like ten minutes, as about the mm-hmm. longest I've seen some of these podcasts and just a little bit at a time. Um, and then also um, online, there's Awana, awanaplus.com. And there's mm-hmm. video resources for, for large groups and, and parent handbooks or parent pages and just all kinds of different resources all in one mm-hmm. nice, neat spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you um, mentioned if there was someone who was looking for like information on how to recruit or information on like, what does it look like to make that ask that you guys talked about on an individual basis? You know, I think you mentioned that there's like the Awana basics online. Um, Is there, is there content covered in that to help a leader know how to do that best? I believe there is in the Awana ministry director piece, there's a piece about recruiting. And so they can go there. And also all of those videos, they can download those and show to their congregation. And those can be great recruitment tools as well. And, mm-hmm. and there's, uh, if you go to the Iwana website and look for the blogs, um, there's a number of blogs about um, mm-hmm. recruiting volunteers on there. Yeah. Um, and then there's the Iwana director's manual. So three volume set. And there's some tools in yeah. there also for, for recruiting people. Yes, that Awana Director's Manual is a great resource for those of you who are looking to really take a deep dive. It's got three different volumes. You can start with one and then kind of progressively move into the others as you feel more comfortable. Um, And so if any of the things that we just mentioned, like Awana Club Plus, or even your Awana Missionary or the Awana Club's podcast, and there's Awana tends to have so many various acronyms, like the AMC and the VAMC and ABO. And you're like, hold on a second. Like, what are all of those things? I need to know more. You need to come to our next event on July 12th. I'm going to be sitting down with Mike Reed and Mike Sexton, and we're going to dig into what does it look like to train our volunteers? How do we take these leaders who have given us that yes and help equip them to be ready for this new club year. And so that is on events.awana.org. You can go ahead and even register for that right this second, if that would be helpful to you. Um, But most of all, um, just know that um, that next conversation around how to train your volunteers is going to be the next step in what it looks like to prepare for your club year and get ready for this fall. 
So thanks to each of you for joining us today. We know that your night was full of other things and that you chose to be with us. Thank you for taking whatever time was out of your schedule to listen to this conversation. And until next time, I hope that you guys have an incredible week and may the children in your churches see the light of Christ on a daily basis. Have a great week.